Hey, it's George. Uh, this is going to be another Vinyl Finds. Um, this one might be kind of long. I might split into two different videos. Uh, we'll see. I went to Seattle, and uh, I don't get to go record shopping in Seattle very often. So I hit four stores, um, one of which, the first one of which was Easy Street, which I had a $100 uh, gift card voucher to that I got in... 2020 didn't use for obvious reasons because of 2020 um so yeah i'll just get into it also my, my voice is, feels a little uh throat feels a little sore so sorry about that i hope it isn't distracting um but anyway first record was on the wall upstairs in easy street and it's really cool it's uh the seeds first album i have this on cd uh but it's nice to have on vinyl and this has um I think I, I like side one more than side two because it has, I think my favorite song is Can't Seem to Make You Mine, uh, No Escape, obviously Pushing Too Hard, uh, Evil Hoodoo is great. And um, this is, uh, I'll try to put up a side by side picture. This, it's not authenticated, but it, it is, has a signature on it that says, uh, To Ian, my friend, Sky Sunlight Saxon. Um, and if you look at his signatures, he always wrote to my friend, to my brother, to my, you know, something like along those lines. And then he had this real scribbly way of writing. So, you know, I tend to believe that um, it probably is signed by him. Um, but uh, whether it is or not, it's still a cool find. So, yeah, uh, it's the seeds and it, it's on that uh, crescendo label. I think it's a later... 60s reissue uh but it sounds good these next two are i'm trying to go kind of fast because there's a lot of stuff these next two are um cramps bootlegs also from easy street and this first one is uh tales from the cramps volume one um this is really cool um it's kind of like a oddities comp of different studio sessions so um Side one, tracks one through five, were pr produced by Richard Robinson, June 77, at an unknown studio. Track six was live at CBGB's. And then side two, tracks one and two, were produced by Alex Chilton, October 77, in Memphis, Tennessee. And then tr on side two, tracks three through six, were produced by Chris Spedding, February 79, at Hot House Studio in New York City. So it's kind of a um, mishmash of a lot of different stuff. I know there is a volume two um that i'd like to get that i think is pink but this is really good um I, there is a little bit of like uh i got it sealed and um i cleaned it before I, I played it but there's a little bit of like a i think there's almost like a tape hiss on some of the stuff on here but it's really this is uh i like this version of what's inside the mask more than the album version and then the live version of, at CBGB's uh, Don't Eat Stuff on the Sidewalk is really cool. So yeah, this is a really great oddities comp. And a lot of um, a lot of Cramps bootlegs seem to have this one same generic label of Lux yelling for some reason. It's on both sides. I just put a sticky note saying side one. Um, and then the other one I got is um, the Cramps... Um, Ohio Demos 79 and it's um studio outtakes from Akron Ohio summer of 79 you get uh Twist and Shout All Tour Up which is great Mystery Plane great version of TV set Rock and Bones another version of What's Behind the Mask Uranium Rock Under the Wires Teenage Werewolf Sunglasses After Dark another great version of Jungle Hop or not another but a great version of Jungle Hop and then a really good version of Mad Daddies so yeah this is cool I don't really like uh, the image they used for this. I don't really like that illustration, uh, but it's a cool bootleg. I like it, how it says uh, two um, wild psychotic teen sounds. And it's, once again, has that weird generic Lux yelling label. I don't know why that's such a, I've seen a few other Cramps bootlegs that have had that. Oh, and I was gonna say with uh, the Tales from the Cramps, Kind of a, a cool um uh, whatever 
um, in the notes is it says it was um, produced by Ed Wood Jr., <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. Um, and then, uh, so those were all from Easy Street. And also at Easy Street, I got um, this uh, bootleg cramp single, uh, Poison Ivy. And this has the Peter Gunn theme. And then uh, the two um, on, I think it was Wanda Jackson's last album, last studio album, they backed her on um, uh, re-recordings of Fun Love Love and uh, Riot and Cell Block 9. So this has those. And like I said, Peter Gunn theme. So, and I wasn't like, I like Wanda Jackson. I would definitely buy the first two albums that are kind of rockabilly if I ever saw it. But I wouldn't buy any of her new albums, and I wouldn't buy any of the gospel stuff. So it's nice to have those re-recorded versions of the Cramps backing her on this. And it's on, um, what is the label called? Connoisseur Recording Services. And it's on um, red vinyl. It's got custom label. And it's, uh, I think there's a few different versions of this. But it's actually a Russian pressing which is kind of weird. I think there's a black vinyl and a yellow and then this red version, but they're all Russian for some reason. And then I also got um, at this, also at uh, Easy Street, um, Eddie and the Hot Rods, 96 Tears and Get Out of Denver, uh, Live at the Marquee. And uh, this is a French pressing, French cover. Uh, it's got those uh, injection molded labels on Island. And uh, they also had two different uh, pressings of the uh, UK cover, but this was $2 more, and I thought the cover was a lot cooler. It's kind of 60s-y looking. And two, I thought, if I ever get really, really deep into editing the hot rods, which I probably won't, but who knows, it's going to be easier to track, if I want every cover variation, it's going to be easier to track down the uh, UK version than the French version. And it was only $2 more. So that was pretty cool. Uh, the next one is, next two are from the same record store. Uh, and this is uh, Snake Finger, uh, Greener Postures. This is his second album. It's on Ralph Records, the Residence label. Uh, he worked with the Residence a lot. He um, put out his uh, three solo albums uh, on there, as well as uh, a few singles. I have two singles and I have a reissue of the first album. Uh, but this is really cool. Um, but before he worked with the residents, he played on a lot of the residents albums, I think from like late seventies up until he died of AIDS in the mid to late eighties. But uh, he does uh, the great song off this, which was a single is a uh, man in the dark sedan, which is really good. But uh, before he worked with the residents, he was in a, uh, late or early 70s, excuse me, pub rock band called uh, Chili Willy and the Red Hot Peppers that uh, played with like, uh, he was their guitarist and they played with like Brins, Brins, ooh, I have a hard time saying that. Brinsley, Brinsley, Schwartz, Brinsley, 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 Schwartz, um, and uh, Ducks Deluxe and stuff. So kind of cool. Um, I really like him. I almost like him more than some of the resident stuff. I would say if you're um, trying to get into residence, uh, listen to the resident, but also listen to Snake Finger because the Snake Finger stuff is really great. And at the same store as Snake Finger, I got um, Brewing Up with Billy Bragg. This is his second album. I don't think any of the stuff off this album was released in the US until the compilation um, Back to Basics, which I think has. I don't think the first two albums or the um, Between the Wars EP were released in the U.S. And so they were all in that Back to Basics comp. But uh, I think the two albums that bookend this, the first album and the third album are better. Um, Life's a Riot, uh, when it's Spy vs. Spy, and uh, talking with the tax man about poetry. But this is still a cool record. Um, the song that I really, I have it on CD too. The song I really remember liking a lot was The Guitar Says Sorry. So yeah, this is, this is a good album. Uh, not as uh, good, I don't think, as his first or uh, final. or Not final, or not as good as his first album or his third album, but I do really like them. 
and at the same record store, I actually bought some CDs. I don't normally buy CDs a ton, but these were really cool kind of Devo oddities. This first one is um, a project they did called the Wipeouters. It's a limited edition of 500, and it's kind of um, Devo doing like a surf thing. It comes in this weird uh, box, and uh, it's kind of like a little surf, little uh, exotica maybe. Um, definitely exotica looking on the back, but uh, really cool record. I've listened to it on streaming before. I haven't listened to the CD yet. Um, but it's just one of those things kind of cool to have on vinyl. And it, uh, most of the members of Devo play on this. It has Mark on it, and then Bob Mothersbaugh, and Robert Casale, and then a guy named Josh Mansell on drums. But, um, and then it says uh, guest artist Gerald V. Casale, Robert Casale, uh, Jim Mothersbaugh, Ursula Mothersbaugh. So it's kind of cool. And uh, like I said, it's kind of a electronic uh, surf sort of exotica thing. There was, I think, a cool picture in the, the booklet, maybe? No. There's this cool picture that's on Discogs that I'll put up if I remember, and it was uh, kind of like a fake picture of them in the as kids, supposed to be in the 60s. Uh, and then the other one I got, which I was really excited about, was... Uh, Devo Easy Listening Music, and this is on Futurismo. This is a two CD version. I had this version, and this came out on Ryko in '87, I want to say. And this has two differences. This has this version has the full version of Shout. Um, on this version, it has an edited version of Shout called Shout Hello Kitty, but this has Shout Hello Kitty as well as the full version of Shout. And then also has a new song, um, Easy Listening, gas, Laughing Gas version of Human Rocket, which is really cool. And this comes with um, one of the big draws for me was the cocktail stick, the Devo Swizzle Stick. I think I've mentioned it on here before. I'll, I'll grab it. It's right over here. I like cocktail sticks a lot. I like old barware stuff. I do have a... This is my... Uh, you know, decent sized uh, cocktail stick collection. So uh, this one's really cool. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to keep the Devo Swizzle Stick with the CD, but it is cool to have as far as that. And I really love this, um, the uh, um, easy listening stuff. I've listened to that CD so many times. It, that might be one of my most listened to Devo things, Devo albums, uh, but... I hate it when they come in these flimsy little cardboard digipack sleeves, so I put them in these. Um, but uh, it comes with uh, it was sealed. It was it was only twelve dollars, which is really cheap. Um, comes with these kind of really cool uh, digipack things, digipack sleeves. It has a uh, boogie boy for president button and. Uh, this, I'm not going to fold it all out, but it's this big fold-out uh, poster thing that has a recipe and uh, stuff like that. Uh, cocktail recipes, and then one side's a poster, and it's really cool. So I was really happy to find this. This is really expensive on vinyl. I think it's gotten to be up until 100 and I wasn't, you know, buying records when it, I think, it came out and... I want to say 2010 on vinyl. Um, so yeah, I was really happy to find this. Hopefully someday I find a vinyl copy or maybe a, a, they reissue it. Or So anyway, I thought those were both really cool. And then um, this one is from the next record store. I showed this in my last video. And that's um, Girl Trouble Thrill Sphere. Uh, this is their second album. Um, this really kind of rounds out my Girl Trouble collection. I'm, they had um, four 12 inches. Um, they had three albums and then a 12 inch EP. So now I have all those. Uh, I'm missing, I think, two, three CDs. Um, the Illusion of Excitement album from 2005, uh, the soundtrack to their documentary on CD, 
and then a live EP CD they put out. And then I think I'm missing three singles. I'm missing a, they did a split with the Monomen, a split with Pop Defect, and then they did a, a two single set on Sympathy for the Record Industry, which is uh, called Elvis Plays, where they just uh, play Elvis covers, but specifically it's songs from the Elvis movies. So I think after that, I will have um, everything they put out on physical media. Uh, there might be a one more single, but I was really happy to find this. It comes with uh, insert, which is, you know, came with all the all copies, has lyrics, but it also came with an insert that wasn't supposed to come with it, or didn't, was, you know, you know what I mean. It didn't come with pressings of it. Uh, someone stuck this in there. It came with a review sheet of all a uh, bunch of write-ups of Girl Trouble's discography of the albums they put out this at the, by the t by this time. Good lord, I always have trouble talking in these videos. It's like as soon as I turn the camera on, I start blabbering and uh, I can't remember what I'm going to say. And anyway, but it has uh, uh, reviews from Maximum Rock and Roll, which was local, I think. Uh, yeah, well, no, but it got circulated a lot here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, review from Flipside, The Rocket, that's what I was thinking of, The Rocket was local. Um, Psychotronic uh, Magazine, so it has some really cool reviews. And it also came with this note written by the drummer Bon, um, handwritten note to Neil. I guess Neil... I'm not going to read the whole thing, but Neil reviewed the whole out al this album, and Bon wrote him this whole note, and uh, so Neil must have got rid of his Girl Trouble record. Um, Neil, I have your Girl Trouble record. I'm not giving it back. You sold it. Um, so that was really exciting to find, and uh, that was at a that and uh, these next few singles were at a uh, really great store in Seattle called uh, Daybreak. Uh, I was going to bring it in. It was in the car. Um, it's been in the car for like a week now. Uh, it, Daybreak has their own matchbooks now. And it's I collect matchbooks too. And uh, it's got this little Daybreak logo and their little character. And maybe I'll put up a picture if I find it. Um, but uh, there I got um, uh, Reassure Norton of Boss Hoss by the Sonics. Backed with the Hustler. It's got this really nice... Uh, reproduction etiquette company sleeve that I really like and uh, also um, the damned uh, there ain't no sanity clause this is a, originally came out in 1980 uh, this is an 83 reissue and it's got uh, looking at you live and then I found this in the 50 cent bin I didn't have this with my uh, rock pile album and it's uh, Dave Edmonds and Nick Lowe sing rock pile or sing uh, Everly Brothers this is really cool too so that was nice for 50 cents so yeah that's what I got from daybreak and then these last three are from the last record store we went to and um these were really exciting too that this first one is a they're all 45s it's a reissue of a spiral scratch by the buzzcocks this has my favorite buzzcocks song on it which is called breakdown uh first song on it um but it has a it was when uh, Howard DeVoto was singing. And uh, the other song that's really cool is uh, Boredom. And Boredom, it has the same little um, like guitar line as uh, Fast Cars off the first album. And it has this kind of, uh, it's this mock, uh, like a fake uh, injection mold label. It's paper, but it's still really cool. And uh, other thing I got there was... Uh, they have these bins of singles that are in this weird little shelf, so I had to kind of like sit and crouch down to look at them. But uh, they had this uh, pretty, pre oh, pretty sings, pretty things single on Norton Records, reissue on Norton, and it's two singles on here. It's a uh, Rosalind and Roadrunner, and Rosalind's my favorite Pretty Things song. I don't have any albums. I really would like to get some Pretty Things albums, but this was really cool to find. Norton does. I think I mentioned in the last video too. Norton does some really, really cool stuff. So yeah. And then this was um, on the wall. I was really excited about this. 
And they also had on the wall, um, I think a Norton reissue of a Ramon single, which I was close to getting. And I was also close to getting, um, they had a destroy, two Destroy All Monsters singles, which were really cool. But I got this, and this was the one I really wanted. And um, I was really excited. Last thing is uh, the Ruts, uh, staring at the Rude Boys, backed with Love in Vain. It's an original, I think there's a Gatefold edition too, and then I think it's pretty common to find this just on a generic Virgin label. That's the uh, custom label. And this song is amazing. Um, I l and the B-side's great too. Uh, it actually, the crossword puzzle is actually functional. I didn't realize that. Uh, it's been on my want list for a while, but uh, it has ins actual instructions. Like uh, seven across, something that I blank, something that I said. So, you know, maybe be fun to photocopy this and actually fill it out. So anyway, but yeah, so that's what I found. Um, I needed to do a couple videos, a uh, couple more videos. So I don't know, hopefully you'll see a couple more in the next week. Uh, so uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope uh, this was interesting and I didn't ramble on too long. And uh, yeah, thanks.